Hello, um, in this video I'm going to talk about a trip I did to London with this sketchbook here and the client asked me to paint probably the most one of the most iconic images you can get in London and that is Big Ben and Parliament Square. Now I've painted Big Ben a couple of times before but it's always been in sort of in the background of other paintings so I was quite looking forward to, to getting down there and doing it you know on its own and I come back with these two watercolours and I had enough in the can to um, finish the final painting on this drawing board here. So anyway, enough about me. Here's the video and I hope you enjoy it. With this particular journey, I'm arriving here on the Jubilee line and this is Westminster. Now it's all a bit dark and gloomy down here. So after the scramble up to the top, it takes a few moments to get used to the light. And it's that slightly disconcerting pause that adds to the freestyle of excitement when you finally get to see what is probably one of the most iconic buildings on the planet. And there it is, the Houses of Parliament in London. Now, I lived in London for almost a quarter of a century and I picked up all the cynicism a big city can give you. However, when you come here and you see all those red buses and those black taxis and you look up and see Big Ben, you can't help but get a kick out of it. Yes, when it comes to Parliament Square, everyone is a tourist, every time. You couldn't fail to be impressed by this vast neo-Gothic structure built by the Victorians to administer a global empire. And at the other end from Big Ben, you have this, sycophantically named the Victoria Tower, and it was once one of the tallest buildings in the world. Thankfully, I'm only here to paint the Big Ben end of things, so I'd better get started. Now the client has specifically requested that in my painting I include the statue of Nelson Mandela, and fortune has it that he sits in the opposite corner to Big Ben, which gives me a very keen angle to work from. Whilst I'm scribbling away, let's have a deeper look around Parliament Square. Whilst we're on the subject of statues, let's have a look at a few more. And this one probably needs no introduction at all, though this is, of course, Winston Spencer Churchill. He looks rather stern in this statue, but I understand he had a rather keen sense of humour. Now one chap I'd have thought have had absolutely no sense of humour whatsoever was the Puritan soul of Oliver Cromwell. But in my research, it turns out I was wrong. He could be quite amusing, and at one time held a party which ended up in a pillow fight. I can't quite imagine it, but there we are. Personally, I'd be terrified of clouting Oliver Cromwell with a pillow especially since that he and his cohorts tried and found guilty of treason, Charles I, here in Westminster Hall. And then, with rather unseemly haste, had his head chopped off in White Hall. The dirty deed was done in front of the banqueting house, which is the one just in front of that building with the dome. No, when it comes to 17th century pillow fights, I'm going to beat up on the minor gentry, like the coward I am. Anyway, we've talked about the neo-gothic of the Houses of Parliament. Now here's a bit of genuine gothic, and this is Westminster Abbey. The Abbey's construction was begun in 1245 by Henry III, and over 40 English and British monarchs have been crowned on this site, including our current king, King Charles. Personally speaking, I think its finest feature is this rose window and, if you're really keen on it, you can go into the Abbey gift shop and buy a copy of it as a coaster which you can use for your small beer. Getting back to the job in hand, I'd say I have enough here for the final painting. All in all, it's been a good few hours work. I've got a couple of colour notes and some complimentary drawings and some photographs as well. Most importantly, I've really enjoyed myself just being a tourist again. Now, where did I put that coaster? Well, there it is then. 
my painting of Parliament Square. Interestingly, on the day, um, I had another appointment later in the afternoon, so I had to put a bit of a, bit of a pace on. And as I was working, um, I was constantly looking at my watch to see, see how quick I was being and if I was going to be on time and catch my train and such. And it was only when I finished that I realised that I, I didn't need to look at my watch at all. It was all there. Now, there's probably a metaphor in that somewhere, but I really can't think what it might be. So anyway, that's all for me for now. And um, many thanks for watching.